Okay, this is lesson 8.4, surface areas and volumes of similar solids. So similar solids are solids that have the same shape and proportional corresponding dimensions. If you recall, this is the very same concept with similar figures, same shape, different size, okay, but their side lengths and other dimensions are proportional. So in the first example in your textbook, they're wanting to know which cylinder is similar to cylinder A. So they give you the dimensions, the radius and the height, and then you can find similar B and C on the side. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at these, so you're putting in for when you're comparing A to B, you have the height of A over the height of B as 4 over 3, and then the radius of A and the radius of B, 6 over 5. You can see that these two do not simplify and are not proportional. But when you look at cylinder A and cylinder C, the height of A is 4, the height of C is 5. Right here, because of this fraction, this decimal, 7.5, we want to multiply by 2 over 2 to rename this fraction as 12 over 15. Then, when you have a common factor between 12 and 15, um, which is 3, if you divide top and bottom by 3, you see that it will simplify to 4 fifths. 12 divided by 3 is 4, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So it's kind of important and kind of crucial that when you have a decimal, either in the numerator or in the denominator, you want to multiply by a factor that will give you an, um, a whole number, integer, so that then you could work with trying to simplify it. Because as written, 6 over 7.5, it doesn't look like in the same form as 4 fifths, but actually it's equivalent. So we need to work on putting it in the right shape. So finding a missing measure in a similar solid. So if you take cone x to cone y and compare them, you have the radius of x to the radius of y would be equal to the slant height of x over the slant height of y. So you have a proportion, 5 over 7 is equal to 13 over l. Cross multiplication will help you get 18.2 yards. So we will try this. Now, for number one, if you recall, cylinder A had a radius of 5 meters and a height of 4 meters. Cylinder B had a radius that was equal to 5 meters and a height of 3 meters. And cylinder C had a radius of 7.5 and a height of 5, and these were all meters. So looking at cylinder D, it has a radius of 7.5, okay, so the radius of A is 5, um, and then you have cylinder D, height of 4.5, and then A has height of 4. So again, we're going to double these amounts, right? So 7.5 times 2 is 15. 5 times 2 is 10. 4 and a half times 2 is 9. 4 times 2 is 8. So there's a common factor here of 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So the ratio here, and this time I did um, D to A instead of A to D. So just make sure that you're consistent when you set it up, that however you choose to put the numerator and the denominator, that on the right-hand side you put them in the same correct place. But 9 and 8 do not have any common um, factors that I can divide out, so we know that cylinder A is not going to be proportional or similar to cylinder D. So again, so now I'm going to show you in a different way. So now let us, let's see if I compare B to D. So over here I compared D to A, and it won't matter as long as you compare it the same way on both sides. So if I have the radius from B and the radius from D, Right? That would have to be equal to the height from B and the height from D. Again, I'm going to double it. So I have um, 10 over 15 right here, and double this, 6 over 9. The common factor in the left is 5, so I can reduce that down to 2 over 3. And in the right, the common factor is 3, so if I divide them both by 3, I get 2 over 3. And since these ratios are equivalent, B is the winner.
okay? Now we could go through and try it with C, but um, I really know that there's only one, and cylinder B is the one that is similar. I'm going to go ahead and erase this work now so that I can do problem two. So in problem two, we are told that the prisms at the right are similar, and I need to find the missing width and the missing length. So I need a, a proportion for the width, and I need a proportion for the length. Got to spell it right though first. Okay, so for the width, I can take the height of, so I can call this A to B, right? So I can set up my proportions are A to B. So I'll do the height of A, which is 20, and the height of B, which is 8, and then the width of A, which is 8, and the width of B, which is W. For the length, I have 20 over 8, and then I would have 11 over L. So cross multiplication will give me 20W is equal to 64, and when I divide both sides by 20, I'm going to get that um, W is equal to 3.2, and that's inches. Okay, here I'm going to have cross products, 20L is equal to 88, and when I divide by 20, I get L is equal to 4.4 .4 inches. Okay, now when we start comparing and finding the surface area, it's very similar to how, like back in chapter three, I think that we found the areas, okay, using dimensions. So we have the surface area of A over the surface area of B is equal to the height of A over the height of B, but that whole quantity squared, because we're talking surface area. So surface area of A over surface area of B is equal to six over 10, so we square six and we square 10, and then we solve for the surface area and we get 216. So let's give it a try. Solids are similar, we're going to find the surface area of the red. So in this case, I just kind of always label these left and right. So I always like to say, okay, this is A, this is B. Remember I'm talking the surface area of A and the surface area of B, and that'll be the height of A and the height of B, or the length of A and the length of B, quantity squared. So that's your general formula, I guess you could say. So um, since I know the surface area of A, I've got 608, but I do not know the surface area B. And I'm going to put that over, and I know A is um, 8 over 5, and those quantities are squared. So I have 608 over the surface area is equal to 64 over 25. So when I cross multiply, I'll get 64 times the surface area, and 608 times the 25 is 15,200, dividing both sides by 64 gives me the surface area equal to um, 237.5 meters squared, and that's the surface area of the red rectangular prism. So now let's do the cylinders. One thing that I know for sure is that in a surface area calculation for a cylinder, I do not use the diameter, but rather the radius. So for red, I have 2.5, and for the blue, I have the radius equal to 2. These are centimeters. So the same thing is true. I have to label 1A and 1B, doesn't matter which is which. Um, surface area of A over the surface area of B is proportional to the side length A over B, or the dimension, which in this case is going to be the radius, squared. So I know the surface area of the blue one, which is B. So I don't know A, but I know this is 110. A is 2.5 for the radius, and B is 2, and those dimensions are squared. So I get S over 110 is equal to 6.25 over 4. So I have, I'm going to write it up here, 4S is equal to, and when I multiply 6.25 times 110, I get 
87.4, divide both sides by 4, and I'll get my surface area of the red one is equal to 171.9, and I have centimeters squared because we're talking about surface area here. Sorry, that's all jammed in there. We can do the same thing with volume, but as expected, the volume, um, the ratio of their volumes is equal to the cube of the ratio of their corresponding linear measures, whether it's a radius or a height or a side length or whatever it might be. So we can look at this one. We're going to find the volume. So it says the mention of this tank um, is doubled. What is the volume of the touch tank? So the dimensions are doubled, so the ratio of the original to the new is 1 to 2. So that's how we're going to use that 1 to 2. We've already simplified it down to be the side length. So the original volume and the new volume, right? The original volume is 2,000. We don't know the new volume, but we know that the side length ratio would be equivalent to 1 to 2 and cube it. So cube the 1, cube the 2, so we have a new proportion to solve, and 16,000 cubic feet would be the volume. So let's give it a try. So again, this doesn't have anything to do with the regular um, formulas for volume, does it? It just has to do with the concept. So we know that volume of A over volume of B would be equal to some kind of a dimension from A over a dimension from B, and that whole amount cubed, because we're talking volume. So again, I just go right to left. So A, we do not know the volume of A, but we do know the volume of B. Okay. All right. So volume of A is just the volume. Volume of B is the 288. The dimension we have is the height from A, and we have the height of B, and the quantity is going to be cubed so that we rewrite it as volume over 288 is equal to 125 over, the number is going to get really big here, 1,728. So through cross products, we will have an equation that is 1,728 times the volume of A equal to 36,000 because we get this figure from 125 times 288 so that we know the volume of A when we divide both sides by the 1,728 to be 20.8 centimeters cubed. Okay? We could do the same for number 6. So we have um, A and B. In this case, we know the volume of A to be 9, but we don't know the volume of B. The side length they give us in A is 3 in B is 4, and those quantities are cubed. So 9 over V is equal to 27 over 64. So 27V, and when you multiply 9 times 64, you'll get 576. Divide both sides by 27, and you will get this to round to 21.3 inches cubed for the volume of B.